Welcome back to the podcast. It's Dave with you. I hope you're doing well. I wanted to put this out there to the community. As I do a lot of interviews here on the podcast, I wanted to share with you a few great ideas that will help you to be an effective guest. As you go on podcasts, I do pre-interviews with all of my guests, and we chat about the podcast creation process and everything that goes behind the scenes of making a great show so that you, as a guest, are featured properly and everyone can hear you well and your message gets delivered in a great way. So I have a few tips for you here on the podcast and I wanted to share them with you. So you ready? Here. Here's some ideas for you. You can put it into place as a guest on your next or first ever podcast appearance. Here's some things for you to consider and I really want you to listen to these and put them into practice on your upcoming guest appearance. Here we go. So being a guest for the first time or early days in your guesting experience can be a little bit overwhelming. You're doing something new. You're on to talk about your book, your project, your thing, and you're going to be sitting there being interviewed by someone maybe for the first time. It feels a little uneasy for you because you don't know where you're going with this. You don't really know the host that well, and you're just nervous. You want, to, you want to do your best, but at the same time, you want to be you. And that's, I guess, the biggest thing we struggle with as guests, is we really want to de- illustrate for the community that, A, we know what we're talking about, and B, that we're someone worth listening to. And being a guest on a podcast is a great way to promote whatever you're working on, to get in front of an audience that don't know you, which is the best way possible to grow what you're doing. So there's a few things I'd love for you to consider right off the bat. And I would love if you do this, if you ever come on my show. But first is to listen to a few of the podcast episodes that are already out in the world. Great if the podcast has been out for a while. That's nice because you can get a real sense of how the podcast goes, the flow, what kind of questions the host likes to ask? Do they seem to ask the same questions of their guest, or do they ask completely different questions every time that they do their show? Listening to some previous episodes of the show is going to give you a connection with the host. One thing that podcast listeners enjoy about podcasting is a bond they have with the host of the show. They feel like they know the host, even though they may have never met them in person. When they listen to episode after episode, they build a sense of community. And for you coming onto a podcast, to have that same feeling of community in that you've heard the podcaster, you know what the show's about, gives you a an advantage where not listening to the podcast and going in blind could be a disadvantage to you because you don't really understand how this show works. So the more you can listen to episodes in advance of coming on a show, the better. Because again, you want to be on the right show. And maybe that show is not the right one for you. Maybe the host is crude or says things that are inappropriate and that doesn't fit with your brand. Maybe you have a uh, a journey of sobriety and breaking alcoholism. And this person has advertisement for wineries and spirits and beer on their podcast. Do you see what I mean? There could be things just about the show that doesn't fit with you, and you need to make the right determination for you, whether or not you fit with the show, and the show fits with you. So listening to the show is going to help you with that. The other thing, just look at some reviews. You can look on sites and see if you're on an Apple user, you can go in and see the reviews for the show left by listeners. That's one way to do it. Uh, You can also look it up online and just see what people are saying about it. And that's another great way to do it. You can look at iTunes, Spotify, all of those different places and see the reviews. Keep your eye on those. That may help you to decide whether or not this podcast is right for you. Another good thing you can do is to have at least two or three stories around the topic of whatever you're doing, the book, uh, your content, what you're there to talk about. Have at least two or three stories that reinforce the main theme of why you're going on the show and what you're talking about. Listeners love stories. Listeners don't want to be talked to like a teacher talks to you and lectures you from the front of the room, no eye contact, 
no connection. They're just there to spout off information. Boring. We want to connect with a story. So anytime you can share in a sense of a story to reinforce what you're talking about, the better. And podcasters, podcast hosts love guests who come with story. And we love guests who come with a plan of what they want to talk about. Bring more stories to your podcast. All that preparation and things you do behind the scenes prior to getting on the microphone, prior to getting on the Zoom room or whatever site they're using. It's just preparing yourself for what you want to talk about and then also knowing what the host likes to do. It's a great thing. I share this example when I talk to my guests in pre-interview chats. I always pre-interview everyone and then we come back and record on a different day. So this is what you're going to hear from me if you come on my show. An example for this would be um, acknowledging the community of the podcaster that you're guesting on. So let's pretend Taylor Swift had a podcast, which she doesn't. But if she did, there'd probably be a little bit about football on there, music, and why 22 is her favorite number, I guess. And one thing she has is an enduring, endearing term for her audience. They're called Swifties. And Swifties self-identify, and they are passionate about Taylor and all things Swift. So Swifties have their own identity. And if you listen to her podcast in advance, you would understand and pick up on some of the endearing things she says and what she, how she addresses her community. So if you're going to be a guest on Taylor Swift's podcast, you would want to make sure that you also address the Swifties. So if I came on Taylor Swift's podcast, she introduced me. Hi, Dave. Welcome to Taylor Swift podcast. So glad to have you here. I would come on and say, hi, Taylor. And to all the Swifties listening to this podcast, I know you would be dying to sit in this chair and have time with Taylor. So Taylor, the fact that I have time with you is amazing. And to all the Swifties listening, I'm so glad to be here. I also am a Swiftie and this is the best opportunity of my life. See what I just did there? I identified with an audience. I identified myself with the community. I called them out. And now there's an acceptance bond between the listener who's like, who's this Dave guy on Taylor's podcast? And the moment I identify as one of them, I'm accepted because I've taken the time to learn what these people, what the host of the show calls their audience. I had an, a guest on my podcast recently. And he used an example about a pickle on his podcast. And so I said, I mentioned the word pickle in our conversation, which made him smile because he knew exactly what I was talking about. But if you hadn't listened to his show, you wouldn't know what we're talking about. So I had to give context. But I wanted to put that out there to show him that I'm listening to his show. Another guest I had on my show, her favorite number is 22. My favorite number is 22, and apparently... Taylor wrote a song about that, but I identified with her listening to her show and going, wow, if she thinks 22 is important, there's got to be a story behind that, which she never shared on her show. And 22 is important to me for many reasons. So I brought that up in our conversation and the look of astonishment on her face, on the screen as to how did, what, how did you know that 22 is my favorite number? On one of her previous episodes, it just kind of came out in conversation. She really never referenced it or explained it, but it just came out. Oh, yeah, 22 is my favorite number. And then she went on to something else. And as a listener, I'm like, hang on, hang on. That's my favorite number. So anytime you can bring out something unique like that by listening to the podcast in advance shows to the host that you really do care about this opportunity to be on this podcast. So do your do your dil due diligence, spend the time, and invest. What about your audio setup? Now, with all of the podcasts that I host, eight podcasts altogether, thousands of interviews now that I've done, I have seen probably the most unique setups for my guests um, from a cafe uh, on a phone to a full-on studio to... Uh, some of the most random things people have used to record a podcast. If, now this is only if, 
if you plan on being on more than one podcast to promote whatever you're working on, I would highly suggest that you do these following things. If you're going to do this more than once, I don't want you to spend money if you're not going to be doing this on a regular basis or in support of something. And all of the things I'm going to mention to you could easily be donated to a school after you're done this, or a library could be donated to any of those things if you can't use these things. But it's going to be something that's not going to be expensive for you, but I think it's a good idea. First, you need to have some sort of way to be on the recording with the host. A lot of people like to use their phone, but I would say a laptop or a tablet or something like that would be better. Uh, I prefer a desktop computer because I'm old or a laptop would be my two choices for you. And then to not use the microphone that comes pre-installed on whatever device you're using, but to use an external microphone. And the reason why is it gonna, it's, you're going to sound better just by using this mic because it's made for this purpose. Just like a baseball bat is made for baseball, a microphone is made for recording. The better you, the more you spend, right? It can become, be kind of a little bit expensive over time. So my choice is I'm using a $50 American, $80 Canadian USB microphone. Now don't let that get you all nervous. A USB is the same kind of end on this microphone as a mouse or a keyboard would plug into your computer. Those little slots, you plug your computer, plug your thing into your computer. You'll see them on the front of, or the back of your computer, on your laptop on the sides. It's a USB. You plug it in, the microphone right in, and you're good to go. That's it. So $50 US, $80 Canadian, same microphone. I'll put a link in the show notes if you're interested in it. So what I'm using right now, and I've had this for over 2,000 episodes, never, ever had a problem with this microphone. And you will sound better just by showing up with a mic. Your host, your podcast host is going to jump for joy when they see you show up with this. The other thing I would suggest is a relatively inexpensive pair of headphones that are wired. Why wired? Because sometimes Bluetooth cuts out, sometimes batteries die. A wired headphone jack can plug right into your device. And the nice thing is I don't hear myself coming through your speakers. And when I hear myself coming through your speakers, it creates a loop, which then becomes feedback, not positive feedback, like great show, Dave, but negative feedback as in this noise and the sound of echo, 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 sound, 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 right? That happens because I can hear myself through your speakers and then it picks up and it sends it through a loop. So having headphones is a great way to cut that all out. Okay, and if you don't like over-the-ear headphones, then in-ear headphones, but still wired, would be a good idea. They're very inexpensive. Again, Amazon for that. So those are two things I would suggest, is having a proper microphone and headphones. Again, if you're going to do more than one episode as a guest, that's something to consider. Please make the investment, because the one piece of feedback I've had from guests who haven't heeded this advice when their episode comes out. I put as much effort into making them sound better, but a bad recording can only be made as good as possible. There's no true fix for a bad first recording. The better the first recording, the better it's going to sound after we do our magic behind the scenes. And I've actually had people say, is that, is that what I sounded like? That's horrible. And with great apologies, I said, yeah, we can either redo the entire thing, which is a big hit to your calendar and mine, or we leave it as is. When you show up with a good microphone, will you show up with the right equipment? You will sound better and you'll be happier with the results. I, at the end of the day, as a podcaster, want you as a guest to sound amazing. And if you don't have the right equipment, if you're using your phone and you're driving down the highway while we record a podcast, it's happened, uh, the results will vary 
and you might not be happy with the time that you've invested to be on the show. When you hear back and go, wow, that's not what I was anticipating. Please get the right equipment. If you have any questions, you can always reach out to me. I would love to answer your questions. Always my information is in the show notes. And if you even just want to have a conversation and maybe a quick test to see how things are for you as a potential guest before you go on the podcast, reach out to me. I would love to do that with you and be your sounding board and answer your questions for you. And the reason why I'm doing this episode is because I have somebody who asked me specifically about this and their Blue Yeti mic that they're using. So I'm creating this information to help them as well. When you're on the podcast, please use the name of the host. Uh, please use the name of the podcast. Make sure that you are addressing each other, host to guest and guest to host, with by using their names. When you answer a question as a guest, make your answers concise. Try not to ramble. Try not to tell us every single ingredient of the recipe, but tell us more about the experience of the food instead of every single piece of information that goes into the story. Leave a little bit to desi be desired because you're a good host is going to pry you for more information if they don't feel like they've covered it all. So be concise when you answer your questions. Be energetic and happy. If you're not having a good day, reach out to the host. If it's just not right today, let them know and maybe reschedule. At the end of the day, we as podcasters are here to serve you as the guest. We want to make sure you have the best experience possible on the microphone, on the video, all of those things. We're here to serve you. When you meet with a podcaster as a guest, if they have a pre-interview separate from the recording or they do a pre-chat before they hit record on the same day, Come with some questions, simple questions for your host, like, when will this episode be released? Where do your listeners like to hang out? Do you provide for me any type of artwork to promote the episode? What can I do for you as a guest after the podcast is released? Are you looking for other guests? Because I might know people who would like to be on your show. How can I help you as a podcaster? Ask questions of the podcaster themselves. We ask questions of our guests all the time. But we don't get a lot of questions from our guests. So ask, is this podcast going to be on YouTube? Is this podcast audio or video or both? What's the goal of this podcast? Who are we talking to? Tell me more about your listener. How long have you been a podcaster? Why, why are you a podcaster? Why are you doing this? Do you have commercials in your podcast? Are you going to edit this podcast or are we going to be recording it one shot, all mistakes included? I need to know that if I have to be perfect or not. For me, editing is always done on my shows, so editing's my best friend. So I don't I don't really worry about being perf perfect because I am far from perfect and I will take out obvious big breaks and chunks and silence and gaps and things that happen that need to be removed. But for the most part, we're just going to have a conversation. Find out if your host is using a script of questions that they're going to provide to you in, in advance. Or if they just can, if we're just going to have a conversation and follow the follow the topic as we get together. Podcasters are different; they all run their show slightly different. That goes back to the original point, where I think you, as a guest, should invest time listening to the show. It's not mandatory, but if you want to be kind to a podcaster, listening to the entirety of an episode, not just the beginning. But the whole episode is a signal to the app that you're listening on, Apple, Spotify, YouTube, that this is a good podcast. And simply by listening to the end of the podcast all the way through is an indicator to that app that this is a podcast worth promoting. So you can simply help a podcaster by listening to the 
the entire podcast. And if you want to leave it, leave a review, leave a comment, uh, mention them on social media to your community. I'm going to be going on the blah, blah, blah podcast. I'm excited to be a guest on this. My first time ever, everybody. So make sure you watch for links and then tag that host. So they know that you are already talking up the interview in advance. They're going to love you for that. Again, if you have any questions around microphones, headphones, how to be a guest, if you want to practice being a guest, you can always reach out to me and the information's in the show notes. I would love to help you and give you the confidence to be a winning superstar on your next podcast appearance. If you need any help, let me know. Thank you for listening to this podcast. Thank you for being part of this community and showing up. Again, if even this is your first time hearing the show, thanks for being here. If you've been here for the entirety of all of the episodes to date, wow, you're my new best friend, and I'd love to meet you. Information in the show notes. Reach out. I'd love to hear your voice, connect with you, and see how I can help you on your journey for whatever you're putting out into the world. If you're looking for an ally, somebody in your corner who's going to help you share your message, I would love to be that for you. Reach out anytime, any day. And let's connect. Again, thanks for listening to the show. We'll catch you on the next episode. We really do appreciate you being here. Talk soon. Mm-hmm.